What is up YouTube? I'm here today bringing you guys a guide on how you could get Plague Diamond on your guns in less than one hour. Let's get right into it. Okay, let's get into the loadout, what you're going to need for this strategy. For one, this strategy is going to work best with your assault rifles, your submachine guns. It's a little bit hard on your tactical rifles, but I've done it before. Light machine guns. And then your three round burst pistol. Other than that, it's going to be too much of a struggle to get through it. Now for your attachments, you're going to want to make sure you put on the barrel that does extra armor damage. In the later rounds when they bring in the armored zombies, that makes it a lot easier. And then make sure you have your ring of fire. Now on skills, nothing is really mandatory. The more you have, the easier it's going to be for you in the long run. The two main perks we're going to be relying on those going to be Deadshot and Elemental Pop. So if you can get those upgraded to the highest first, that's better. And the ammo mod, if you don't have any of them upgraded, just work on Cryo Freeze because that's the only one we're going to be using on this strategy. Because this is the only one that allows you to get headshots and not kill the rest of the zombies around it when it goes off. Okay, the first thing you've got to do, which is probably going to be the hardest thing, is you got to get some friends to join in your lobby. You can do this strategy solo, but it's recommended to have more people in your lobby, which everybody gets a benefit from this strategy. They get some free XP and crystals. At the beginning of the match, your main goal is to make sure you get all the reactors turned on and get all your perks that you need and your weapon upgrades and get back to the spot where we're going to be sitting at for this strategy. The earlier you can get it done, the quicker you can start getting those headshots. Now if you're doing this solo, then I highly recommend running alongside the outside of the map as you can see me do in this video. Now at this point you should be in between 8 to 10 minutes into your match. Now we're going to make our way back to the spawn so we can get our cryo freeze, pack a punch up to level 1, and then also get our perk, uh, Deadshot Daiquiri. Now if you find yourself short on points you can't get all three things that you need, I recommend just running circles for a round or two at the spawn room until you can get all three things and then head out. Now, once you have everything, you're going to want to head back to the third reactor that we turned on and upstairs go to the colonel's office. This is where we're going to be sitting for the most of the strategy. As you can see, they run straight down the corridor and you can just knock off the headshots because the nice thing about Deadshot Daiquiri is if they're within your crosshairs right when you aim down your sights, you lock right onto their heads every single time. Now, this is where I'd say this strategy outperforms all other strategies only because you can get those headshots without hitting any other zombies and if there are zombies they're behind them and you're also getting headshots on them whereas if you're running circles and you went for a headshot you'd end up spraying a couple of the zombies either behind or around because the ground is not level resulting in once you shoot those same zombies that you sprayed earlier you wouldn't get that 100% critical damage as you would here because all the zombies line up perfectly now once you get 2500 points, it's pretty important that during a round change, go ahead and jump down onto the first floor to the left of the colonel's office and right there you can find Jug. On your first assault wave, make sure you run back to the spawn. It's probably the best time to do it only because you won't get caught up in the middle of a round by a bunch of zombies spawning in. There's nothing worse than being 20 minutes into your game and dying because you get stuck between some crates and the zombie and lose all your progress. But anyways, make your way down to the pack-a-punch machine and go ahead and get your next tier on your pack-a-punched weapon and spend the rest of the points that you have on the rest of the perks or whatever you can afford. Now the assault waves can be a little tricky considering the fact that you're taking on three or four players worth of zombies by yourself, but that's where all the new perks you just bought and the upgraded pack punched weapon comes into play along with your ring of fire. The first one's normally not too hard, you can knock that one out by yourself. It's the second one that comes along that's a little bit more tricky. Now once the next assault wave starts, this is the best time to run back to the spawn. By now you should have enough points where you can purchase all the perks if you don't already have them and your tier 3 pack a punch. 
Now at this point you should have everything you can possibly buy which leaves you with a ton of extra points. And my favorite thing to do and probably the easiest thing to do is just go ahead and get the napalm strike or whatever uh, purchasable airstrike you have in your area. Just go ahead and buy that and just spam the crap out of them. You've got nothing but points to spend at this point. Now if you're doing this solo, these assault waves should not be that hard. They should be pretty easy to where you can just knock them out with nothing but your gun and your ring of fire. But once you finish the assault wave, you're just going to want to head back to the colonel's office and just sit there and just kill zombies until round 30. Now it took me one hour to get to round 30 with three people including myself, left me with over 3200 kills and amazing weapon XP at the beginning early rounds because the way this works is the weapon XP is slowly scales down per round to where essentially you're almost getting nothing past round 30. Now that's only with two extra people, if you had three you'd have a whole lot more kills and a whole lot more weapon XP. Now if you can get the extra players together, I would 100% say this is probably the fastest XP you can get for weapons and the quickest you can get eliminations including critical kills, headshots, within one hour. So let's get into the numbers for single player and see what we got. Now doing this solo, I was able to get to round 30 in exactly 44 minutes. Now within those 44 minutes, I was able to accumulate a little over 1400 eliminations and 1100 critical kills. Now, it's my legal YouTube obligation to inform you guys that absolutely 0% of you guys who are watching this video are subscribed. So if you want to support me and help me out in the future, it would be awesome if you could hit that subscribe button and like this video. And comment down in the description what you guys want to see more of because right now I'm stumped. I don't know what kind of content to come out with. This is my first video, but I guarantee you I'm going to have a lot more videos in the future.